oil shocks in context, market volatility, government intervention, and the agriculture industry. This presentation is intended to replace the presentation that I would have given had I been in class on the day that Robin Gray. One of the topics discussed in the presentation was the effect of free markets as a distribution mechanism for goods and services. Adam Smith tells us that in the long run, free markets are the most efficient way to distribute goods and services most of the time. However, as John Maynard Keynes so insightfully points out, in the long run we're all dead. And part of the reason that this insight is important is because markets, while in the long run they might be the most efficient and might be over time stable, in the short term they can be fairly volatile. And part of the problem with this is that while volatility might not have a big impact in the long run, it has a very large impact on the fortunes of individuals in the short run. So firms and consumers like to know about the future because that's how they make investment decisions and purchasing decisions and pricing decisions and a lot of other decisions that are important for an economy. Oil is one major source of volatility in the economy and <clears throat> one instance where oil shocks are especially effective is in the agriculture industry. Agriculture is already fairly sensitive to volatility because it has fairly low margins and also because it's subject to uh, unpredictable events such as weather and um, pest species and so on. And it's unusually, it's unusually affected by oil shocks because oil and petroleum products are used fairly heavily um, at multiple points in the agricultural production process. Not only is oil and petroleum products used to run things like farm equipment and processors, it's also used to produce um, pesticides and also to produce fertilizers. And so when the price of oil goes up, um, the profit margins of agricultural production um, can take a very large hit. And this has actually been borne out in uh, a lot of older research and in some newer research. Um, however, agriculture is politically sacred. Uh, most states want to keep solid agricultural bases around um, for two reasons. One being the defense reason and the other one being the self-sufficiency argument. Um, the defense argument kind of goes thusly. Most countries in a time of war um, will exp The point is that consumers and firms like certainty, sometimes more than efficiency. As with all economic decisions, there's a trade-off. So in the case of Georgia, Georgia has a decision to make. Either it can increase its liberalism and join the EU, or it can maintain its relationship with Russia, which is possibly a stabilizing force for their industries. And the trade barriers that Georgia has in place could mean that its industries, especially like agriculture, are protected from adverse shocks to the economy. One thing that would be interesting to see in future research, especially in regard to oil shocks, are better studies addressing reverse causality and interceding variables. The way that oil is sold and used in our economy is really complex, and it's an input into a lot of different things. And furthermore, the way that the economy sort of wraps itself around oil um, is complex as well. And so we have plenty of theoretical of mechanisms, but little hard evidence to demonstrate uh, those theoretical mechanisms. So basically what we would need is larger studies with more data and more complex models. Because as of right now, we don't really have, uh, we don't really have a way to say what an increase in oil price actually causes what. All we can say is when the oil price moves, these things happen. But realistically, we can't say sort of which came first, the chicken or the egg.